Hey everyone, I just want to finish up what we barely got to start in class today. So 3.1 to 3.3 functions intro, I gave you this in class. Um, things to know is a review talking about variables can be related in many ways. A function is a relation in which every input is associated with exactly one output. Um, I also did post these documents for the online students and if you miss class and didn't get them in the hybrid. Uh, domain is the set of all possible inputs. Range is the set of all possible outputs. So you really wanna start thinking of everything as input output. So the notation y equals f of x, we've had that before. And thinking of it as y being a function of x or more specifically, y is the output that the function f associates with the input x. So just getting you used to some of the vocabulary that you're gonna have later on in pre-calc and calc. Dependence, if y is a function of x, then we can say y depends on x. If y equals f of x, then the average rate of change and we abbreviate that A-R-O-C, or say AROC for short, of F from X equals A to X equals B is F of B minus F of A all divided by B minus A. So you have the difference in your outputs over the difference of your corresponding inputs. And so what some of these things would look like if I had a graph and say I had, we're used to having um, just a linear straight line that we <clears throat> can find the slope of. And we would find delta y, that's changes, change in the y's over delta x, change in the x's. We would be used to that. That's just our m, right? Our slope. Well, now we have to just translate that over to function notation. We're also gonna sometimes have curves. So for instance, if I had a curve that just kind of looked like this, I can find the average rate of change or the average slope between two particular points. We'll call them point A and point B. And the corresponding, um, we'll put that in red, the corresponding y over here would be f of a and the corresponding y for the b value the b input would be f of b so <clears throat> i can draw what's called a um, secant line and that would look like this just kind of going through these two particular points a straight line and I can actually find the slope but you have to be real careful to specify the two points that it's between so keep that in mind um, another thing I want to kind of point out over here also um, notation I might write something like for example given f of 3 equals 11, I could also write that as the point 3 comma 11, so kind of get used to that. Or for instance, if I had that um, f of a equals a certain um, value, just say like um, z <laughs> that would be the point a z okay if we just want to put variables in there now we started this bird problem earlier but i'll go through it especially for online students so we have um, number one b so this is the function um oh, we're just saying this letter b equals n of t so b is a function we are writing it as n of t. t is our input and n is our, um, or n of t is our output. But for simplicity, we're just going to call that 
whole n of t thing b. So it's similar to how we call f of x equals y. Well, n of t equals b, just labeling it b, b to represent birds. So b equals n of t represents the number of birds, b, in thousands migrating through Washington t years after 1990. So a lot of times you'll see in these problems and in pre-calc, um, the time is designated as a certain amount of years after a start date. So the question asks, explain the meaning of n of 7 equals 9.2 using everyday language. So just put it in your own words. So I could write the point n of 7 equals 9.2 as 7 comma 9.2 as a point. I have to think um, about what that means in years. Um, oops, and here I wrote 1990. I meant to write 1997. That's what I should have there um, because it's seven years. If T is seven, seven years after 1990 is 1997. Then I would have 9,200 birds that migrated through Washington. Um, I just took the 9.2. It's in thousands. You could write 9.2 K, but that's not usually how we would speak. If it's a small enough number, we can just write that as 9,200. Part B, we have if N of 9 equals 6.1, find the AROC, which means average rate of change, aka the slope between two specific points, even if it's a curve. We just um, take that average between those points. And we have t equals 7 to t equals 9 and explain its meaning in everyday language. So we have to figure some things out. We're given this information here. So we have this point n of 9 equals 6.1. So we also have um, the n of t from above. We would need to have a function given to us or some other information. So this is based on part a as well. And so as with most things, we want to write our formula down first. So average rate of change or AROC equals f of b minus f of a all divided by b minus a. So that's our formula. Now we're going to go ahead and fill in the specifics for our data that we have. So if I'm thinking first, I need f of, for n of 9 in this case, <clears throat> and I'm going to subtract that from n of 7, which would be my second output or first, actually second minus the first, I think is how I have it here. Um, and then my input was nine, so that's gonna go on the bottom, minus the other input is seven. So see how it matches. Now I'm given that n of nine equals 6.1. So I can go ahead and fill that in. And I was given in part A that n of seven equals 9.2. You could have those vice versa, as long as you also had the X's vice versa, um, or the inputs. And then nine minus seven on the bottom. Now I could have jumped right to this second um, part. I don't have to always write every, you know, particular thing out. So now I'm just gonna crunch the numbers. And again, don't forget to, um, Try to keep doing things without a calculator. Just keep fresh on that, but you can go ahead and use one if you want to. Um, we do like to either get it as simplified in some way, shape, or form, or force it into a unit fraction. So you're going to force the denominator to be 1 or just divide it out. And I would get negative 1.55. And how I would interpret that is I would say something to the effect that there's a decrease of, that's the negative, a decrease 
of 1,550 birds that migrated per year between 1997 and 1999. Because remember, this is in thousands. So this is really in thousands. So to write it in everyday language, I have to uh, make that more meaningful. So make sure you do uh, write out the sentence that, that I have here. And it's really important for these to have this part, the uh, which two points that you're going between for your inputs. You would lose a point on a test or a quiz for that. This next part is just some charting. This should be pretty much review, so go ahead and try that. So we'll do this as a try it. Um, one thing I do want to say is you are supposed to watch videos and read the book. It just depends what you submit, so it's up to you. Um, if you do submit the try it's from the textbook, make sure you write out your steps. I'll just mark you zero if I get a list of answers because I do give you all the answers, the key. So if I just get a key back, that kind of makes me wonder and then most people have tons of steps. Um, so just be aware of that, that you really should be writing that out. Uh, if you're getting zeros on that, you might want to just stick to turning in your video notes. So go ahead and try number two. Determine if each table represents a function. If it does, find f of 1 and f of 6 and solve f of x equals 1 and f of x equals 6. <clears throat> Those are different um, things. When you're putting, you're finding the output given an in input, and the other is you are trying to figure out what the input was based on the output. And remember, stick to the table. Do not extrapolate out. Don't try to find a formula or something. Like I know some of your electronic homework has that, but we're going to stick to the domain and range specific to the table. Okay, do not extrapolate. Okay, so for this first one, um, yes, it is a function. Everything works. We only have uh, one output for each input. Um, we have f of 1 equals 1. f of 6 does not exist. f of x equals 1. To solve that, we would get x equals um, negative 1. We have also at uh, 1 and 3 are the inputs that lead me here. Common mistake is people just want to use this um, 1 as an input, but that's not what it's saying. This 1 here is an output, f of x equals 1. So also f of x equals 6. There are no 6's in my f of x row, so my answer is no solution for that. But it is a function. Um, and we'll go on to the next one. We have this table where 1 goes to 0, it also goes to 3, so it fails there. So we just can't even answer any of the questions. We don't bother to say it fails. It's not a function. Okay, for number three, the graph below shows the mean flow rate R equals F of T for the Arkansas River in thousands of cubic feet of water per second as a function of the time T in months since the start of the year. So we have a graph here and then some questions to answer. So it kind of looks like a little mountain peak there. Um, I have the flow rate. So the flow rate is in thousands of cubic feet per water per second. So we're going to write feet cubed per second and that's R or the um, R equals F of T but we can just write it as R. Um, we can also write the time down here on the x-axis is T. What I, looks like I wrote someone's name there, but um, what I did was write the zero time pass is in January, and then February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, just to mark that because it's shifted up 
we usually say January is the first month, but that's we're just saying that's the start is January 1st. You could have done it a little differently, but we're just going to, um, to be consistent, we'll do it that way on a test or something. I would label those for you more specifically. So if we want to find f of 7 and explain its meaning using everyday language, first we have to kind of look here. What is f of 7? Well, 7 would fall right about here um, between 6 and 8. And then we would travel up. It's kind of in between the two lines. So you don't have to be real precise with this. Um, and it hits right about there on the graph. And then if we just travel over to the left, I see that it's about 1.7 is what I'm going to say. So f of 7 is about 1.7. So what that means is approximately August 1st, the flow rate of the Arkansas River is 1,700 cubic feet per second. So um, I'm going to write that sentence out in a moment. I'm going to pause the video uh, so you can have that down for your notes. Okay, question B says solve f of t equals 2. So that's your clue that you're going to be looking for the input this time. We need to find t given that our output r is 2, or f of t is the same thing as r, and explain the meaning of your solution using everyday language. So for this one, we're going to look over to the y-axis and find where we have a 2. And then I suggest just kind of draw a horizontal line all the way across there because a lot of times people only put one thing down. They just look out, oh, there's a 2, and what's the corresponding input? But they miss that it hits in two spots. Okay, so that's really important. Um, so you're going to have two answers on that. So see if we can pause the video, see if you can figure it out yourself. Uh, just travel down and figure out how you would say that. And I'm going to write it right here and then get back to you. How I might word that is um, the flow rate was 2,000 cubic feet per second in mid-June and late July. So my corresponding outputs down here are about five and a half and six and a half. Um, so I have two spots to consider. When is flow at its greatest? That's part C. What do you guys think? Let's kind of look at the peak here. That's my max. <clears throat> so if I look at when, I want to look down. And it's about at the 6. So that's going to be about July 1st or beginning of July. You could just say something like that. The flow rate's greatest around July 1st. Again, we don't need to be super precise. And last one, part D, find the average rate of change or AROC from of r from t equals 4 to t equals 6. So that's my um, difference. I have to find the difference in the uh, inputs. So I know that in my denominator, I'm going to have the 6 minus 4. And in the top, I need to figure out what um, f of 6 is and subtract f of 4. So go ahead and try to find those. Just approximate what they are. Uh, pause the video and then check back. And then see if you can figure out how to write a sentence now that you've had some models. Again, just your own words. It doesn't have to be perfect. So looking at the graph, I have um, the point for f of 6 up here at the peak and traveling left it's at about 2.2 and then for the four hits here near the bottom travels over about 0 0.4 all divided by 
6 minus 4. Um, one thing I want to point out too is this uh, yellow highlight here. That's the secant line that we're talking about. Since it's a curve, it's not a perfectly straight line. So we're finding the average. And then we can just now calculate out these values. 1.8 divided by 2 equals 0 0.9. And how we might word that in this sentence is the flow rate increased about 900 cubic feet per second per month between early May to early July on average. So I have the months written there and that it's on average. So I hope that helps you get used to the language and just putting things in your own words. Um, from data and keying into specifics like it has to be um, between you have to write that it's between those two input values things like that I know this is a real struggle spot in pre-calc and most of us kind of expect that you'll be a little bit familiar with it we're not expecting that you're gonna be experts um, but when we just plant the seeds here now in, in your college algebra, you can be more used to it and you're familiar. And then it's going to be like, oh, now we can do more cool stuff and applications with it. So I hope you found that helpful. Have a great night and I will uh, make some more videos for the rest of the posted documents there.